Now that you know the basics of importing in Python, it's time to talk about absolute imports. Performing an absolute import just means that the resource to be imported is identified using its full path from the project's root folder. For this example, imagine you have a project called Projects, and within this project are two packages, Package 1 and Package 2. Package 1 contains a pair of modules, and Module 2 has a function called Function 1. And when you call this function, all it will say is it'll just print out that this is Function 1 for Module 2, which is in Package 1. And that way, if you're able to run this, you'll know that your import was successful. Package 2 is a little bit different. It has an init.py file, which contains a class called Class 1. It also has a pair of modules that don't have anything in them right now. But it also has a subpackage called subpackage1, which contains module 5. And this has function 2, which, like before, prints out that this is function 2 from module 5 in subpackage1. So this directory is set up to show some of the different possibilities that can happen as a project gets larger and larger. So if I were to open up the terminal, and let me bring this up, and let's change directories into projects, so that if you list everything out, you'll see package 1 and package 2, and then start the Python interpreter. So if you wanted to import module 1, you could say something like from package 1, import module 1, and that would work. And this is telling Python to go ahead and look inside package 1, and then find module 1 and import this resource. But since we don't have anything here, that's not too helpful. So let's look at module 2 again, and take a look at two different ways to import function 1. So if you were to do the same thing, and say from package 1, import module 2, now if you try to run function 1, you're going to run into an error. And that's because it's not defined. So even though Python knows to look in package 1 for module 2, you're importing this module 2 as an entire resource. So if you wanted to call function 1, you would then have to say module 2 dot function 1 and call it off of that. Now it can get annoying to have to type out the module over and over again. So here's where you could do something like from package 1 dot module 2 import function 1. And now from within module 2 you bring function 1 into that cache. So function 1 should work by itself. While this works, it also brings function 1 out of module 2's namespace and can cause some conflicts. This is where you could import something as something else to avoid these issues. So if you did something like from package 1 import module 2 as and let's just say something like mo. Now you could do mo dot function one and that would work as well. Now we can mess around with package two. So if you wanted to you could say from package two import class one and to make sure this is working just do something like c equals class one and that works just like that. So here because package two has this init file Anything that's in here is then imported by importing the package name above. Finally, let's try to get to this module 5 function 2. And just like before, you can say from package 2, and then look inside that sub package 1, and then inside module 5. You're going to want to import function 2. And just like that, function 2 works. And that's pretty much all there is to absolute imports. The main thing to remember is that wherever you are, you have to define from the project's root the entire directory structure to get to whatever resource you're trying to import. PEP8 recommends absolute imports because they're pretty clear and straightforward to use. Another benefit about them is that if the location you're calling that import changes, it'll remain valid. Because of this, you might be thinking, why not always use absolute imports? And while it's true that you should use them as much as possible, depending on your project, they can result in very long lines. 
So for here, you're looking at a package with a sub-package and a module, and depending on what you're working for, that might be very shallow. You could end up with dozens of sub-packages and modules, and at that point, it's not feasible to write that all the way out for every import. This is where relative imports come into play, and you'll learn how to use those in the next video. Thanks for watching.